Welcome back to the Art of Cerclage. The topic for this video is Vaginal Cerclage, a Surgical Atlas. The learning objectives for this video include introducing, comparing, and contrasting the two techniques for a vaginally placed cerclage, McDonald and Sherrod Core. Discuss considerations for operative planning. Let's take a moment and briefly review the four indications for cerclage. History indicated, physical exam indicated, ultrasound indicated, and history of unsuccessful cerclage. Now remember, one of the key distinguishing characteristics between these indications is how they are placed, vaginally or abdominally. In this video, we will focus on the vaginally placed cerclages. Let's recall some information about the timing and removal of vaginal cerclages. All of these are placed during the active pregnancy. History indicated cerclages are usually placed around 12 to 14 weeks. Physical exam and ultrasound indicated cerclages can be completed until 24 weeks. All vaginally placed cerclages are removed at 36 to 37 weeks or earlier if the patient is in labor. The two techniques for vaginally placed cerclage are McDonald and Sherrod core. This picture helps us discuss these two techniques. The abdominal cerclage is placed at the level of the internal os via the abdominal cavity. The two types of vaginal cerclages are represented here. The McDonald cerclage is placed as anterior as possible on the exposed cervix in the vagina. The Sherrod core cerclage requires further dissection on the cervix and therefore is placed more anterior than the McDonald cerclage, closer to the internal os. To better compare and contrast these two techniques, let's review each procedure individually. The McDonald cerclage. A reminder from anatomy, with outward retraction of the cervix, you can identify the cervical vesicle junction where the bladder reflects onto the anterior edge of the cervix. When inserting your needle, the goal is to start as anterior on the cervix without injuring the bladder, using this junction as your guide. To walk through the procedure, we will use a clock to help us define positions. Using the ring forcep to position the cervix properly, the needle is inserted just lateral to 12 o'clock, as high as possible on the cervix, but avoiding the cervical vesicle junction. The curve of the needle and your wrist motion help the needle exit around 10 o'clock. Using a ring forcep also ensures that only cervical tissue is included in the bite it is important that the cervical canal integrity is preserved and is not entered. This whole maneuver is then repeated at the eight, five, and two o'clock positions. By placing needle entry points in specific areas, we avoid the cervical vessels at three and nine o'clock. The McDonald is often called the purse string technique. You can see the motions of the needle and suture on the left. The knot is cinched down when the suture is pulled tightly to close the cervical os, as shown on the right side photos. Alternatively, some prefer to start at the 6 o'clock position instead of at 12 and tie the knot posteriorly. Overall, the McDonald technique requires good retraction of the cervix and positioning of the needle and suture. The Sherrod core cerclage is much more technically difficult and requires more steps. The first is to make an incision on the anterior and posterior cervix. For the anterior incision, it is important to be mindful of the bladder using the cervical vesicle junction as a guide. For the posterior incision, the surgeon should be cognizant of the location of the rectum. After these incisions, the bladder and rectum are bluntly dissected off the anterior and posterior cervix using a finger, sponge stick, or a peanut sponge. The dissection should be continued back far enough to allow the surgeon to palpate the insertion of the uterosacral and cardinal ligaments. Alice clamps are then used to grab the edges of the anterior and posterior incisions on one side, bunching the paracervical tissue and vasculature in the clamp. The needle and suture are passed through the cervical stroma just beneath the Alice clamp on each side of the cervix. After pulling the suture and ensuring the suture lays flat posteriorly, a knot is thrown and cinched down on the anterior cervix 
until the internal os will not admit a fingertip. Following the cerclage placement, the anterior and posterior incisions can be closed with absorbable suture. Closure is not necessary if there is good hemostasis at the incisions. If closed, the cerclage tail is left exposed to facilitate removal later on in the pregnancy. This completes the charade core cerclage. Now that we've reviewed these two techniques, let's compare them. The McDonald's cerclage is overall easier to complete. The technique also utilizes the entire cervical stroma to close the cervical canal. The McDonald cerclage is also easier to remove. The charade core cerclage is more technically complex, requiring surgical dissection, which can increase blood loss from the procedure. However, this reflection allows the cerclage to be placed closer to the internal cervical os, but the healing from the dissection can also make the cerclage difficult to remove. These points bring two questions to the forefront. One, which technique is better? Overall, they are equal. The existing literature shows no significant differences in pregnancy outcomes between the two, but it should be noted that no randomized trial has compared these two techniques directly. Second, which should you perform? The answer is simple, whichever you are more comfortable with. Many trained providers prefer a specific technique. However, sometimes in the case of a physical exam indicated cerclage, dissection is not possible, so the McDonald is the only technique that can be conducted. Of note, the next video in our video series will show the McDonald technique on the model. Unfortunately, we cannot dissect on our reusable model so we cannot demonstrate a charadkar cerclage properly. Now we'll transition to discussing operative planning. There are three main key elements I want to discuss here. Positioning, tools, and sutures. In terms of positioning, dorsal lithotomy allows best visualization of the cervix, which is needed for cerclage placement. Tools. It is important to have the necessary tools during the procedure to properly place the cerclage, so it's important to know that you have the correct equipment. This includes retractors, needle drivers, ring forceps, Alice clamps, scissors, etc. Sutures. Unlike other surgeries we perform, we do not want this suture to dissolve. The key to keeping the cervix closed is to use a non-absorbable suture. Of note, we used a green color suture in the diagrams and on the model used in the video series so that the suture could be highlighted easily. Let's delve further into suture type. The three most common non-absorbable cerclage suture types are Ethibond, Mersaline, and Proline. Ethibond is a monofilament braided suture that is made from natural polyester. It's usually dyed green. Mersaline is a monofilament braided natural polyester fiber strip. It is important to lubricate the suture before using it. This decreases the friction and tear from its wider size. Additionally, the suture needs to be laid flat. This will be demonstrated in the model simulation later on in this video series. Proline is a synthetic monofilament. This suture is usually dyed blue. Here are the sutures placed side by side. The needles shown here are also different, a V37, a MAO4, a CT1. These numbers represent the differing angles in the curvature of the needle. I know the question you're asking, which should I use? The optimal suture material and needle type have not been evaluated against each other in randomized trials, but all three have shown to work successfully in cerclages. All three suture types are acceptable choices and surgeons have their own preferences. One other consideration is knot position. The knot can be tied anteriorly or posteriorly in either McDonald or Sherrod Carr technique. Studies have not evaluated if anterior or posterior knot position change pregnancy outcomes. However, in general, anterior knots are preferred as it's easier to remove later on in pregnancy. Let's summarize what we've discussed in this video. There are two techniques for vaginal cerclage placement, McDonald and Sherrod Carr. 
Overall, the efficacy of both cerclage procedures is similar, but they have never been evaluated in a randomized study. The technique used and suture material of the cerclage is based on surgeon preference. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Join us for the next in our series, where we demonstrate the McDonald's cerclage on our model.